Hi, everyone. Um, great to see you today for our session, Reclaiming Creativity for a Regenerative Fashion Future. Uh, it's wonderful to, to see some familiar faces. Um, some of you have been joining several of our sessions and it's really much appreciated. I'm also currently, just so that everyone understands, I'm also doing this on Instagram Live at the moment. So I will be slightly multitasking today. Um, so I thought that I would repeat the same uh, format that we followed last time by starting out with a small presentation just to kind of get everybody started. And um, so the other thing that I would like to add just for some like housekeeping for the session, and this is not for you guys uh, who are live on Instagram, it's only for those of you attending on Zoom, which is to please mute yourself because otherwise for those of you who are not muting yourselves, we can hear my presentation and it create, creates a type of echo. So. Eva, if you could please uh, mute yourself, uh, or I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Um, that would be great. But obviously, for those of you who, um, who uh, would like to participate and um, you know, at some stage speak in the session, uh, you have the option of unmuting yourselves and also turning on your video. Um, so just everyone is sort of rolling in and my cat is already starting to uh, participate in the session. This should be fun. Um, so basically, yes, I was saying, saying to everyone just for some house cleaning, please mute yourselves until it's time for, for questions. Uh, when we do open the floor for questions, try to just keep it to like, two minutes, three minutes uh, speaking. And, um, and uh, also this, this session is filmed and then I post it, post it on YouTube. So just so that everyone is aware. Um, so I'm going to start today again with a sort of a 10 minute presentation. It's really just an overview. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more, um, a lot more references, a lot more signals from where this came from in terms of sharing with you some of some insights. Uh, but this, this is just to kind of jumpstart uh, a conversation and get us going because it's kind of hard sometimes to just uh, start off cold. Just, you know, everyone just send a question, you know, that's that sometimes can be a little bit intimidating for people. So I've noticed it's just easier when I start kind of sharing some of the things that I've been working on. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. So um, in terms of reclaiming creativity for a regenerative fashion future, I thought it would be uh, great to discuss this in terms of being able to, um, to uh, hold on, I have to admit everyone still, people are still rolling in. So um, basically, you know, regenerative fashion and sustainable fashion is an amazing opportunity to also reclaim what creativity and what the design process means for us uh, within the fashion, uh, our, our role within the fashion industry. And this could be uh, for, for us merchandisers, designers. It doesn't have to be that you're someone who's actually uh, designing clothing, drawing. Creative thinking, design thinking applies to, to many areas. And um, I thought it would be great to kind of have an open conversation. And obviously, for those of you who who are experts in this, please do do share uh, what, you, what you have to say. Um, but essentially, today we're going to talk about kind of how we can reclaim that creative process. And, um, you know, and this also as a tool to make this industry a, a happier space. And um, 
And so we'll touch upon circular design thinking, the idea of reuse afterlife, uh, biotechnology within materials, biodegradable materials, different things. So um, I'm just going to start now with our presentation. But um, essentially, today, I'll just go through like 10 slides, not very much. This is the repeat from last last season, uh, last week, I mean, for those of you who missed last week, which is this idea that we are at a time right now when we are um, in the middle, in a way, of these tectonic shifts pushing up against each other and uh, the, the creating a new landscape, a bit like an earthquake between climate positivity, collapsology, um, what we're going through in terms of the, the digital and technology taking over a lot of our of our areas in terms of services and design, um, automation, AI, but the, also how we redesign artisanship and craft. What industrial efficiency means to us, you know, versus nature's genius, fashion, the idea of fashion being sewn versus grown, um, how businesses and governments are collaborating or taking over each other, and we're seeing this really take place currently with uh, the coronavirus crisis, especially in the United States. Um, you know, what does global collaboration mean in a future where potentially we will have scarcity, economic collapse versus social support? Um, you know, this idea that we've always worked around profit margins and that was our worship, but how do we now evolve into a future that is m more human and more, more social? So, because make no mistake, I guess, at this stage, fashion is in a way a political act. It's very difficult to escape from this because of the social and, and human implications, e economic implications that we're facing today. But there's some really exciting things going on in terms of reclaiming creativity and how we design in the fashion space at the moment. Uh, even just in terms of materials with uh, the, the range of materials that we could be reusing. So on this slide, I'm showing material reflex, which is a new type of material with which you could uh, design objects. The material can then be uh, molded back again through heat and could be used for prosthetics, could be used for any number of objects. And then to the, your right is a collaboration between the New Museum and Apple, who did a series of collaborations and exhibitions throughout four cities in the world, just having us explore art, but through augmented reality within the streets of cities such as New York, London, et cetera. Um, so this is kind of showing to us that we have the opportunity now to kind of define what regenerative means to us. It's not just regenerative in terms of materials, it's also regenerative in terms of um, how we approach our design process, how kind we are to ourselves, to, to our staff, to how we run business, to our suppliers. Regenerative uh, thinking is and working is not simply towards the product, it's a really, um, wholesome way of working. So on this slide, I have a, just a couple of examples to get you going in terms of what regenerative uh, fashion means. First of all, we can look at uh, sustainability and a fully circular model by looking at monomateriality, mono which is something that Napa Pajiri have been doing in terms of using exactly the same uh, material uh, for the fabric, for the fill, for the trims, for the zippers, for everything. Therefore, the, um, the item is much easier to recycle and put back into the system. And we also have Volleyback, you probably know, have created um, a t-shirt that is fully made from algae and can fully biodegrade. MIT Lab has recently collaborated with one of the winners of the Project Runway to design the first 3D printed fur, which is uh, called Celia, and it's actually a derivative of glass. So that's an amazing kind of also alternative to um, animal-derived fur or synthetic fur that's made from, um, from fossil fuels. 
So there's a number of technologies we can look at and regenerative fashion is a, just another nice way of talking about sustainability and talking about uh, a fashion process that feeds the planet, that regenerates the planet, that is carbon positive, hopefully. But in order to make that happen, we also need to create items that we can take apart easily, that we can uh, replace easily, that can have also a different use at the end of their life. There's a number of ways that we can approach the way we design uh, way before it's an output and way before it's a product so that it is fully regenerative. And this is why we're in such an exciting time because I know for myself, I don't design for brands anymore. Um, but when I used to, we never ever approached design that way. We were only basically asked to design a final product. But today we have the opportunity to look at product uh, in its system. And, you know, this idea of a hyper object is really changing. And everything has a meaning. Everything has an opportunity to, to, to feed our planet, to feed our, our, our economy in a, in a whole different way. So to the right is an example of a trench coat designed by um, Nyla Atani, who's a, a Central St. Martin's Materials MA graduate who developed a type of uh, glue that replaces sewing. So the seams are easily taken apart at the end of the garment's life. And again, that can then lead more easily to reuse. I'm just gonna to go to the next slide now. Um, and again, I've talked about this earlier in terms of, of biomimicry, when I think one of the first sessions we had, I think last week. So thinking, regenerative thinking is also one that is in line with nature. So we're, we have to look beyond the fashion realm and look at architecture, look at living spaces. You know, and this impacts also our own retail spaces. Having retail spaces that provide more uh, carbon um, absorbing trees, more shade, regulate temperature using materials that we can potentially even eat, like notpla, which is made from seaweed and can be completely eaten. Um, Hackles is also a great example. And this documentary is really interesting, 2040, because it talks about a future which is completely achievable because Damon Gamo, the filmmaker, uh, his absolute rule for the, the documentary was to use existing technologies such as permaculture, uh, ride sharing, uh, driverless cars, a number of technologies sharing um, electricity as well. There's a number of technologies that he uses in the documentary to basically prototype this future in, in 2040 um, and what it might look like. So he does that through CGI. And if you can go on the website and find where, where it's playing near you, well, obviously after this crisis, I was even thinking of writing to, the, to him and seeing if there's any way of of having it available online because it, it's such a wonderful uh, documentary. And um, finally, this idea of um, regenerative fashion really gives us a whole new way of looking at value exchange and how we can design into, uh, design into reuse for every product and how that can also affect a whole new sense of ownership, a whole new story in terms of marketing, um, how we repair clothing. So these are just a few examples. Worthy is a project by Tommy uh, Lorcan and he was an RCH graduate and the fastest form of pollution right now is actually e-waste. And so he tried to find a solution for that by creating a product that is interchangeable and by doing that, he created also a product that has different colors, really brings play and almost a type of toy inspired aesthetic into his objects. So regenerative thinking can be fun. It can really create a whole new experience uh, for the designer and for the end user. You've got centers such as Mills Fabrica in Hong Kong, which uh, offer full repair and this type of glass 
encased room where uh, we can see our garments being repaired. Bethany Williams is obviously a leader in the space in terms of bridging social welfare and working with underprivileged demographics uh, and also using recycled fabrics. And then, you know, by just one example of the Space Hippie Collection by Nike, where Nike basically harnessed all of their waste uh, in their factories, everything that would, were offcuts, everything, and grind, the, grind them again to be reused for the fabrics and the soles. And, and again, it just kind of also is an interesting development because as you can see from the slides, it also spurs a, a different kind of aesthetic. And um, so um, just to kind of the other thing is that's really interesting about regenerative fashion is how we can bring in new technologies such as uh, 3D design, uh, virtual reality, holograms, as well as um, aug augmented reality, just in, in general mixed reality to uh, prototype our designs without having to extract from the planet although obviously there's energy used for the machines. Um, it's a different way now of really experimenting with our designs and looking into sustainable ways. So uh, for example, the Fabricant, they've just also released fully downloadable garments, but they've been doing collaborations with Puma and a number of brands uh, just to kind of pilot what this future of fashion may look like. And I, I don't think that it's something where digital fashion takes over um, handmade fashion, you know, or factory produced fashion. It's just how can they collaborate? And the idea of this talk is, is kind of jumpstarting a conversation around how you might think that this could inspire your own process and you know how you personally envision your future and your role in 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 the this next era of fashion so um just the final slide is just so you know really how do we reevaluate our modes of production and consumption in a way that is regenerative in a way that is good for the people and the planet and brings us to really redefine what true efficiency means. Because I think we personally, I think we, we haven't necessarily been, you know, as efficient as we may have thought. So this is an example from uh, the innovation agency Bria who used 3D modeling uh, in order to prototype clothing and Brooke Roberts who is a knitwear designer as well and was actually is actually a scientist she works for the she used to work for the NHS this is a, a, a digital rendering of a garment that she produced uh, when she used to have a collection and at the time the prototype cost her 3,000 pounds and today with this technology it's uh, costing th 300 pounds so it also just completely makes business sense for brands and individuals, to small brands, large brands, to kind of go, step into this direction. So um, I'm gonna open the floor for um, questions. And I also have a couple of web pages that I can share of different things. But um, if anyone wants to kind of start sending over questions, and. I, you can uh, raise your hand, and if you can, please, um, when we talk, try to limit it to, you know, three minutes, so that uh, there's a bit of space for everyone to speak as we have um, another 20 to 25 minutes to speak together. So would anyone like to chime in in terms of their thought on what I just shared, or questions? Give you a minute to think. <laughs> I can see Adrian is like, hmm. Uh, I'm gonna unshare my um, and just get back on the screen. So, um, anyone want to? Does has anyone uh, uh, anyone here? You know, really already engaged within a type of regenerative fashion practice or is actively embedding sustainability in their practice and would like to share some of that with the group?
No. Um, well, if anything, if you'd like, I can show you some uh, some inspiration. Uh, let me see. So. So um, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, So as you can see, I'm on the Instagram page of a brand called Vivo Barefoot. And they're a footwear brand that has been producing vegan footwear and has kind of been making ways because their whole idea is that currently the way our shoes are shaped is wrong and that our shoes should embrace more the shape of a footwear, of a foot, I mean. And so their whole, idea around regenerative fashion is not just to design a product that is, um, you know, can be easily recycled. They have one particular model that is also partially made from algae. Um, they also do have leather, some leather uh, shoes, but they're made with wild hides. So they're collaborating very closely with farmers who have uh, animals and go a lot in the wild and only kill them when, when it's the right time. And they have these just really great, healthy, regenerative relationships where, with their suppliers. And what I would say, if this makes you feel any better, I know that it does for me. What's interesting about um, Vivo Barefoot is that they said we, you know, we don't have it right. In fact, there's a lot we we have wrong. And um, in a recent conversation I had with their head of sustainability, and um, who her name is Emma Foster Gehring, uh, she shared how they had to kind of relook completely at the way they were approaching sustainability and realized that in fact there were things they weren't doing right. So for example, their algae shoe had certain uh, components within the material that weren't as easily recycled as they thought, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is that regenerative practices don't mean I'm perfect. Looked at me, I'm perfect, and this is exactly how I'm going to do it. Regenerative practices are about also learning as you go. And that's really what I personally love and resonates with me, not just as an environmental activist, but just as a human with you know, the circular design model. It's, it's constantly evolving. It's constantly redefining itself. And, and part of a regenerative uh, practice is to collaborate constantly with other departments and redefine every step of the way what you're doing, with obviously always the main goal of it going back into the system. So there's never any waste, but still, I think it's a very human practice. So I would highly encourage you to go on the Vivo Barefoot website and just kind of look at some of the things they've been implementing. They recently uh, had a post where they talked about the fact that, um, you know, uh, plastic footwear is not vegan footwear and that kind of made a big splash so you know regenerative practices are about questioning ourselves as well and constantly you know evolving so it's it's a way of mimicking a uh, very uh, deep human consider deeply human considerations so the next one I'd like to show you is called icebreakers and this is uh, a brand that's um, very famous brand. They've been around for more than 20 years. They're a bit like the Patagonia of New Zealand. I don't know if some of you know uh, Icebreaker, but they're quite an amazing brand that's mainly uh, based around outdoor clothing. And um, their whole premise is to work with wool. So again, they have really healthy, regenerative, long-term relationships with their farmers. And then they, the thing about wool is that it's probably the mo one of the most breathable fabrics that you will ever use. And they've combined this wool with um, another fiber that is uh, tensile, which is actually made from eucalyptus, to create this type of clothing that is highly breathable. You don't even need to wash it very often. And when you're done with it, you can, you know, plant it in your garden or. Um, 
And the thing, I actually own some items uh, from them and they're pretty amazing in the sense that you could exercise with them, the sweat completely flicks off. So regenerative is every step of the way. It looks at the mat material, the fabric, the relationships, the people, and the end of life of, of the product. Um, what am I going to show? Just quickly, obviously, uh, probably many of you know Bethany Williams because she's kind of a figurehead in this space in terms of what she's done in building a brand that it reuses materials but also has very, very deep social uh, activism embedded within their, their business, her business model of working with prisoners, working with uh, women who live in shelters, et cetera, et cetera. So she's a great way of looking at how um, fashion can be successful and can be a highly creative model with, and, and still be profitable, but measuring profit in a different way. And, and measuring potentially profit and how it gives back to the community. Um, so what I'd like to also share with you now, um, unless, has, does anyone have any questions? Because now I've been doing a lot of the talking and this was kind of supposed to be a, a discussion and a Q and A, so I would love it if, if anyone has questions. Let me check on Instagram. If anyone has questions, please send over. Um, Ah, I see a chat. Hi, hi, Harshini. Hi, you have a question. Um, let me. Uh, great. Do you want to um, share your question with us? Let me unmute. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Lovely to meet you. Where are you uh, calling us from? I am calling from India. I'm calling from Chennai. Oh, amazing. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting because um, I'm just taking an online course on sustainability. Um, and I just wanted to know what is your take on um, how big companies um, at this time of crisis can relook at their practices to make it sustainable for the world, you know, considering what's going on at the moment. Do you think everybody is going through this reinvention process where they're like re-looking at their supply chains, re-looking at the fabrics that they're sourcing and things like that? And how would you say a company like, for example, uh, Amazon or H&M look at what can they do to make it more sustainable um, for the future? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think, uh, well, I'll try to answer in a, a few different aspects, but um, basically I think it's a tricky one. First of all, there's a couple of scandals at the moment in terms of some of the brands that you mentioned, the way they're treating the, the warehouse workers. In the UK, for example, there are more the warehouse uh, industry is, is bigger than the coal mining industry was. Um, so that, that's, that's something that needs to be addressed and is becoming a bigger and bigger scandal. Um, then there's also the fact that um, uh, some of these brands, H&M, have had issues with paying their orders. So that's the first step. They're going to be held accountable for that. Uh, but now that we see how dependent we are on our supply chains that are spread out across the world and the kinds of problems that that's caused us, I think there's going to be a big push for more local industry in some way or another. But that obviously is not going to happen overnight. And, and we also have to be the watchdogs of that and make sure that it's done in a way that is not hurting our environment. But I definitely think that we're going to, I think it, you know, it's very hard to predict right now what the future is going to be. And everyone is kind of saying different things. I believe that it's a reset. And based on all the conversations I've had with many people, they feel that way. But some other experts are thinking, are feeling that there's also going to be this type of rush to buying, that people will have really missed shopping 
and uh, and there has been instances in in China where there's been this type of revenge shopping, but I I personally think that the sustainability uh, model, the sustainable model, was you know going to, to was was a um, was uh, already at the forefront of the fashion industry. And um, now we're going to see that basically it's just going to really, I think, really fast track even more. And um, I just wanna, sorry, I'm, I've just been asked, I'm gonna stop sharing, but I've been asked by, a, by a, we're kind of like going over time already, I guess, soon, but, um, I've been um, I've been having these conversations and attending other uh, webinars, and that's that's kind of the impression that I get essentially. And so, uh, one of the things going that's really going to help brands and industry is also adopting specific uh, PLM models that enable circular fashion within the industry. So, um, I'm just going to. Um, quickly show one one example, but there are other examples. Uh, where can I share my screen? Um, so this is a company called circular.fashion. And basically it's a digital platform that enables you through a system called Circularity ID to have total transparency, also even down to them creating specific woven labels for your garments that will show the the end user where it's made etc cetera, etc cetera. because um i don't know how many of you work in the the fashion industry as designers or product developers De deborah uh anybody else so for those of you someone else i see um I'm just gonna stop sharing. Um, yeah, and so basically within the, as a, it, within a design team, you work from the tech pack, you have to work with your product development team, source the fabrics, submit the tech pack, go to the factory, prototype it, et cetera, et cetera, fit it. There's a whole uh, ecosystem that exists just around one garment, which is one of the reasons why this industry is so wasteful. And um, companies like Circular.Fashion enable a system where, uh, where that whole process would uh, enable circular fashion in the f fabrics that you use, in the transparency, in putting all of the suppliers, everyone knowing where everything, uh, the end user being able to track that on the label, et cetera, et cetera. Because it, it's not just an individual designer, it's a whole system that has to enable this. Um, I'm just gonna uh, read Audrey's question. Hi, Geraldine and all, how about how to differently measure profit for a company? There's a great fashion brand example in France, which is profitable called Loom. Internally, oh yes, I've heard of Loom. They are divided, the, they have divided the carbon footprint products and personalized. So everyone from design to distribution is involved in the design performance. Um, okay, so that's really interesting. Uh, does that mean that it's a bit like a cooperative? Audrey, Aud, I don't know if you would like to chime in. It sounds like it's a bit of a cooperative model. Is this Aud? Hi, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi. Thanks Hi. for joining us. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Would you like to tell us a bit more about how Loom works? So Loom is a menswear um, brand in France and yeah. uh, it's a, they begin as a digital native brand. So it's pretty small. It's only four people. Uh -huh. uh, they produce in Europe only. And oh, okay. what they decided to do, it's like everybody is, in, is involved from the CEO to the product developer, developer people to distribution, um, meaning that everyone has a performance target to achieve for one product uh, in terms of uh, transportation, uh, fabrics, um, uh, fabrics performance, and so on. 
And uh, they also decided to only go for um, essential and basics products like uh, main shirts with a very short um, color range. And why they did, it's uh, instead of having few collections a year, they decided to have only one product, but to improve every six months or every year to improve the same product. Meaning they will uh, not change the design, but they will look for better fabrics. They will look for better uh, bulk solutions, those kind of things. And so all the chain, you know, is involved to improve the product. That's, that's so, um, that's, that's an amazing model. Um, I think I had heard of something else in France that was called Loop that I thought that's what I had heard you mentioned, but Loom is a totally different thing I had never heard about. And uh, so they you, do you one, find product, one product a year. No, it's a, it's a, a range of product from menswear. Product. So they have a wardrobe, but instead of redesigning the products, they will keep the same design and they will, uh, uh, will look for um, um, opportunities to improve this design by the fabric, the accessories, by, you know, the, the belt performance and so on. So it's, uh, let's say shirt number one will stay yeah. shirt number one, but year 2019, 2020 and so on. And uh, until now they are only focusing to menswear because it's easier, you know, to satisfy men's customers with this kind of products as well. Great, wow, S super interesting. Thanks for sharing. If you are interested in, there is a TED talk given by, by one of the CEO. This is in French, but I guess you speak French as well, right? Yes, yes, I do. Um, that, if you wanna, um, okay, I will, I will look it up and, and me uh, possibly share. The link and I'll share. Yeah, um, there's another uh, question from Dana. Hi, Dana. Lovely to see you um, here. Read you. What do you think about buying secondhand fashion? It seems like it has been coming back for a while now. But do you think it would reduce the need for new clothes, or is it a small game player in the fashion industry? Um, I mean, as far as the data shows, um, uh, ThreadUp is an organization that did a lot of research on this and. Their views are that by 2030, the secondary uh, fashion industry, which includes rental, uh, will have outpaced uh, high street fashion. And we can see just from the, the level of investment that rental brands like Vistier and, uh, have, have received that it's really a booming industry. So um, it, it seems like it's set to really outpace everything. Um, and, th and that, again, is a model, even if you're producing new clothing, there's different uh, systems now, even software plugins within a commercial website that can now be created so that the brand has the opportunity to not only benefit from the existing uh, collections that they're designing and selling, but also then put them back in the system through resale. So, uh, so again, it, the regenerative, uh, reclaiming creativity is about thinking about all of these systems and bringing them to the table of the conversation uh, as, as, as members of the, the style industry. So I see other questions. Um, oh, no, no, sorry, I didn't see any other questions. Well, I'm going to just share one uh, a few other examples that some of you might already know um, whilst I wait for potentially other questions. But for those of you who are kind of trying to learn more about this idea of circularity, uh, I would highly recommend the, uh, the Nike Design Guide, uh, which is a really great kind of interactive guide on breaking down what it means to design in a regenerative way through your material choices, your recyclability, waste avoidance, disassembly, which is really important, uh, green chemistry, refurbishment, versatility, durability, circular packaging, and new models. And it, this is designed as a kind of, almost like an online course and it's free. And so it presents videos 
um, case thought starters, as well as case studies. And it's a really amazing tool, which is obviously applying to potentially footwear, but I think the principles of it can be applied to any and